We always focus traditionally on how, who the person is under the umbrella, but not why the umbrella is so important. My name is Rita Malina Benison. I'm an artist. I use photography, many types of mediums like photography, fashion, textiles, and now the umbrellas as a canvas to tell the stories of myself, my family, my culture, and my country, Ghana. And now I'm also the founder of Sea Henny, uh, which I also direct, which is the archives of the chief and sea in the traditional culture of Ghana. Starting my art practice in a traditional medium, just like painting, textiles, one, like most of the things that you'll learn in school, even if it's through high school or university. Um, grad school actually got me to the point where I actually wanted to kind of take further on what, who I am, who am I as an artist. Um, using structures like an umbrella. Then myself, you know, I was thinking about, okay, well, yes, you know, I've been raised in the United States for all, many years, but, you know, my cultural background and my home will always be Ghana. Uh, but I think in the United States, I felt that there was a disconnect because I didn't really go home um, during holidays or the summers, like maybe my friends. So my experience of Ghana was through my parents' perspectives or what I would see through Instagram, well, not Instagram as much, but through social media. Thinking about my own family heritage, I was looking into my grandfather on my mom's side, who was a traditional chief. And so within the chiefancy, they used umbrellas as a power structure. So many of the items that maybe the students that I was photographing were dressed gave them power, or even their hair gave them power. You know, the umbrellas was something traditionally in Ghanaian culture, they gave power to the community, they gave power to the chiefs, the queens, the king. My father was Togbe for Suhini. I, I was happy to have a dad who was a chief, but he was very strict. He was also generous, humble, but he doesn't fear to tell the truth. She was a baby when we went to the state. And I came back and she stayed there, had her education over there. We thought she should have chosen something else apart from the umbrella. But you can't force her to choose what you want her to do. Because that's what she's going to do throughout all her life. And when, if she's happy of doing what she's doing, she should better keep it. And we could see that she's doing a very good job. And especially fighting for Ghana and fighting for the artisans also. Because we see the umbrellas, but we don't know how to, it is done. So she needs to lift up the names of the artisans in Ghana high, high, high. With the umbrellas, the rim is actually the one that's telling the story. So, because you might not see the top of the umbrella, you might not see the underneath, but you're seeing the rim. And so that's how they're telling their stories. So at first I was using the rim to tell my story, even if it's about a, a proverb that I really like or a parable that, or a folk tale story or a small line that really hit home for me or inspired me, I would put that on the rim. And then maybe use Adinkra symbols on as well to just say, okay, these are my favorite Adinkra symbols or these are something that connects to my family or just something that felt right for that time. And then after that, I was just like, you know what? No, actually, I want to actually really just kind of take over the umbrella and actually really remake it as a whole structure. So even having an imagery that's on top of the umbrella, something that's underneath, because when a chief is underneath it, he's actually looking at something. He's not just looking straight forward, he's also looking at top of the umbrella and said, okay, whatever he's looking at top should also empower him or empower her. And so I wanted to do the same thing as well. And also too, a lot of the umbrellas are not seen in exhibitions. You know, they're never seen in galleries or museums. They're just seen where like, 50, like maybe 100 feet away from you where you can't even barely touch it. So I felt that, okay, whatever I do, I really want to make it a really big presence. Whatever stories I'm trying to tell, I'm now figuring out a way to now throw it on the umbrella. And working with um, traditional craft makers, I'm also giving them a new perspective on pattern making. So I wanted to find a modern way to tell those parables or proverbs or folk tales within a more modern way. So like the two-headed ones is like, two heads are bigger, uh, better than one. Or two chiefs can, can govern a community together than just one person. Because then you're getting two different perspectives or you're getting more perspectives to help a community. 
So it's a modern way to take on what you will see or like where the, they might have a different um, way to display two heads are better than one, but mine is, is shown in a more modern way. So I still want to be able to have this very new essence of the umbrella, but still having a very traditional sense of it that it still hold, holds on to it because it's such a historical object that I can't completely change it and I can't take it as my own because it's also it's all, it will always be something that will be known in Ghana. But now I, as an artist and you know being a Ghanaian artist as well, I'm able to just kind of bring in a new generation of what it could be and how it could be seen. One thing I wanted to really push on about, okay, how can, how can I broaden the views of the umbrellas? Because like, yes, we can always lay it down an umbrella or just hang it, but like the experience of how people are going to interact with it is so important. The recent exhibition that I had with Afrochella, I made like an umbrella dome or an umbrella hub so that people can actually enter this wooden dome and then they look up and there's an umbrella like underneath them. So they're able to still see the bottom part of the umbrella, like I always have designs on them, but then they're also just able to kind of like sit. It's kind of like an umbrella house. So they're able to sit down, look up, and then also interact with the photos that are inside the dome. Um, but they also just embody that power. And I think that was also important because like I said, the umbrellas are yes, an in indicator, but they're also protection. So how does like a hub or a dome protect an individual? And how do they also be able to embody the chieftaincy or embody being a chief or be embodied being a king or a queen without having that lineage or have that, having that, um, in, like that stool name? And I think like Afro Child was like the best because in a way it was able for people to interact with art just like as a regular object but then also interacted where it's something that could protect them they could lay down whenever there was a new performance i started see henny because um i wanted to keep myself accountable within my artwork and my research um, i love school like i don't think i i don't know what i would do without school um but i felt that i was too dependent on school in a way where i felt that okay I needed my professors to tell me, okay, you have a new project coming, or you need to do this, or you need to do this. But I was like, you know what? I'm about to graduate next year. So C. Henny started my, I guess my second year. So it was like an idea of like archiving, but I was like, oh, I'm just gonna collect a whole bunch of images and that's it. I remember I took a photo of two waitresses um, under one of the royal umbrellas, and I called it C. Henny to say like, even though yes, they're two waitresses, they can still have the empowerment of a queen because they're under this umbrella. And so I kind of want whatever people interact with my art, even if it's the umbrellas, my photos, my paintings, my fashion, whatever, they're going to feel like a king or a queen. And so Sihini was like the best word because it means installment. And so now like for Sihini, I hope to make it a museum. I want to establish many museums, but for now I really want to establish a museum and research center because Sihini started as my research. And so I want to be able to provide a space where people can actually do more research within the chieftaincy because I feel like people are interested, but they don't know the historical background. And even for me, I'm still learning <laughs> as much as I'm I feel like people are saying I'm teaching them. They're really teaching me because a lot of times the image, the photo is there, but the information about who the photo, who's being photographed, the date, their name, the position is not there. So a lot of times they're saying like, oh, this is my grandfather, this is his name. This is the year this, was photo, this photo was taken. So now we're literally retelling our story, telling, retelling our history. And I think that's much of a bigger accomplishment as well for me within my life because I'm just like, wow, this is something that actually can be big. And I think if it's a museum, it can even be bigger because I want to actually do something where in each region, even if it's a big or a small museum or a small exhibition space, we're able to shake, show, showcase our history and that people in that region has that access. Because once the access is not there, then the history kind of leaves and be forgotten or unseen.